This is CouncilCast, part of the Legal Talk Network, and I'm your host, Karen Conroy. When you face a complex case outside your expertise, you bring in a co-counsel for next-level results. When you want to engage, expand, and elevate your firm, you bring in a marketing co-counsel. In this podcast, I bring in marketing experts who each answer one big question to help your firm achieve more. Here's today's guest. Hi there, I'm Jack Newton, the founder and CEO of Clio. Jack, thank you so much for being here. This is gonna be a great conversation. I feel like it's timely, it's relevant, and it's kind of everything everybody's talking about. So, uh, you know, basically everyone's conversation all wrapped up in one podcast episode is everything everyone needs right here in one episode. (laughs) I'm looking forward to it. (laughs) Thank you. So um, there's so many different conversations we could have based on your experience, the things that you've talked about, your events, your software. But today, I think what we want to talk about is a combination of the economy, kind of where it's going, what you were talking about at the most recent Clio Cloud Conference, combined with all of those lawyers who are out there starting new firms and kind of in a bit of a confusion about where to start, how to start, what the steps are. So let's start by talking about your amazing entrepreneurial journey. I know you launched in the last Great Recession. And um, so I'm curious, you know, what was that like? And what lessons do you look back in retrospect and think, that was a great idea or this this was not? (laughs) I would not do that again. (laughs) Yeah, well, I I think... Just to give everyone a bit of history on Clio, we were founded in 2008, uh, launched at ABA Tech Show in March of that year. And I remember the the headline of The Economist, uh, walking through an airport on the way to ABA Tech Show uh, and seeing the cover of The Economist at that time. And it had a, a picture of uh, the, the cover image and illustration was all of the big bank logos like JP Morgan and <laughs> yes. Bear Stearns yes. circling around a drain. Yes. And and the headline was, uh, when will it end? <laughs> and I, I remember thinking, what what an auspicious time to be launching uh, a startup. And yeah. w- what I've belatedly come to appreciate is that being born in a in a recession and navigating a recession as as part of the founding experience of of building Clio actually imbued the company with a lot of traits that I think have have really benefited us over the long term. There's a level of scrappiness uh, yes. at, at Clio. There's a level of commitment to uh, our customers and supporting them through hardship that that was really born in those early days at at Clio. Because we we saw interestingly 14 years ago some of the same macro level trends that we're seeing today as we enter this next recession. And, yeah. and we see, for example, lawyers leaving safe, large firm environments, either voluntarily or, or potentially because they've been laid off and hanging a shingle. And they yeah. need to figure out what are the tools and technologies that they need to, to support themselves in either being a new solo or being a new boutique law firm, maybe with a few friends that that also have have fled the big firm environment. So we've, we've actually seen, we've seen this movie before. Uh, yes. and, and it's really exciting to, to see um, the level of entrepreneurialism that happens in this kind of an environment and, and the amount of energy that again, you know, it's, it's not necessarily what feels like the best thing in the world when it's, when it's happening, but there's a lot of people that make really great life moves and, and changes in their lives because of the, the catalyst of a recession that they look back on and, and really are happy that they made that leap, made that change in their life that they may not have ever, ever pursued if they hadn't been um, forced to because of a, a macroeconomic situation. Yeah, so I have, it's kind of an interesting uh, parallel. I was finishing my MBA, I finished in 2009. So in 2008, we had to do an international residential. So we're in Hong Kong and we're going down to like these meetings with, you know, Microsoft and, you know, these guys are coming to speak to us. And in a healthy economy, these are people that are potentially going to offer us jobs. We, uh, when we started our MBA, we were thinking, oh, this is going to be big time. And 
I will never forget getting ready to go down to these, you know, these sessions in Hong Kong, watching the news, and AIG and Bear Stearns were tanking. And, I, and all of us were thinking, oh, no, <laughs> what does yeah. this mean for our future? And it definitely did not play out the way we planned. But I think along the lines of what you're saying, that's a really healthy place to be where, you know, your plans are not exactly going according to this perfect idea that you had. And so you have to pivot and you have to figure this stuff out. And so in terms of like just to pull it to marketing specifically, where then where did you think things were going to be? And what did you kind of plan for? And then what were you wrong about? And how did you how did you change in terms of like the economy and how things were different? Yeah, well, we we encountered a few pretty immediate challenges. One was raising money. So sure. we, we thought we would be able to raise money in this environment and that even, even if people were um, anxious about the macroeconomic situation, they'd still write checks. And by people, I mean venture investors or angel investors. And that is something I was wrong about. We, we pitched... <laughs> Uh, yeah. everywhere in Western Canada, down in the Valley, and heard this really frustrating feedback where people were, were saying, you know, we love your idea. This is actually a phenomenal idea. We, we, we love the team. We love the idea. We love the market. We think this is a big opportunity. But we're sorry. We're, we're just not writing checks right now. We're kind of like people are really battening down the hatches. And, and again, with the benefit of some distance, it's it's hard to remember just how severe things were, but people yeah. were legitimately worried about the financial system around us collapsing and that the yeah. economy as we knew it was going to be a thing of the past. You know, it was, it was like what's happening with FTX over yes. the last two weeks, except with the real economy, not just the, the crypto <laughs> right. sideshow. Yeah. Um, exactly. And, and so things were really, really rough. And you know what, what's amazing, and I, I, I can tell this story if we have the time, but yeah. what ended up being this incredible uh, act of, of, of luck and good timing on our part was uh, I did a, a, a blog post. I, I got interviewed by a friend of, of mine. He put a blog post up, and an investor based out of Germany cold emailed us and said, I, I read about Clio on this this blog that was called Web 2.0 Central. I love the idea. I just became an angel investor and made my first angel investment oh my in gosh. a company called Zendesk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so that turned out wonderfully for him. Zendesk is a multi-billion dollar public company today. Yeah. And 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 I, I love what I see in Clio and, and see some similar traits. And, and can we have a conversation about me potentially investing? Th th this the hilarious part of this story, by the way, and one of the things that makes it uh, one of my favorite stories about Clio to, to tell is that uh, this this email from this Christoph Jans based out of Germany went straight to our spam folder. <laughs> Google looked at it and thought this this is a this is an email marketing scam. This right. is you know this is a guy out of a web.de email address asking He's for about investment. Invest the uh, talking word about investments. investment yeah. exactly. Straight to spam. <laughs> yeah. And then what I can only describe as an act of God, my co-founder, Ryan, was so bored on a phone call one day that he checked his spam folder oh and my gosh. asked himself the question, I wonder what's in my spam folder. <laughs> Saw this email from Christoph, forwarded it to me and uh, said, this looks legit. Do you want to reach out to him? And cut to six months later and, and Christoph's writing the first million dollar check into Clio in 2008. But so uh, le lesson number one, lesson check number your one, spam folder. Check your spam folder. <laughs> yes. This is your concrete <laughs> takeaway lesson. But yes. it does show you, you know, I, I think the takeaway lesson for, for me there was we were really investing in low cost marketing of the company at that point. We, yeah. we could not afford Google ad spend. We could not afford paid customer acquisition. So we really focused on uh, getting the word out. Um, you know, when my friend uh, reached out to me and said, I, I want to write a blog post about Clio, I wasn't sure it was going to generate any customers for me, but I, I thought, hey, at, at a minimum, this is a backlink into Clio.com. Why, why not get this article written? It's going to help our, our Google juice a little bit. Well, let, let's do it. Um, and uh, we invested in, in relationship building with people like Bob Ambrosi, who 
wrote the first blog post about Clio back in 2008. And, nice. and to this day, it's one of our highest sources of traffic still. That's um, awesome. You know, because people look to trusted experts like, like Bob and what they're, what they're covering. So we really took a, a low cost go to market approach that was very PR oriented. Uh, back in 2008, nobody knew what the cloud was. Nobody right. was sure what the cloud meant for their law firm. Nobody was sure if it was safe or ethical or compliant for them to use a cloud computing solution for their confidential client data. And, and we decided, hey, we, we need to guide this conversation and we need to be thought leaders in the industry because nobody else is, is doing it. So we, we started writing white papers and I started giving talks at every legal conference that would have me uh, about the security and ethics of cloud computing. Nice. And we really helped uh, drive what I would say is a, a transformation and a change in the mindset around cloud computing from what we saw circa 2008, where there was real concern about what cloud computing meant for lawyers to what we're seeing today, where cloud computing is table stakes for any law firm that wants exactly. to be uh, a modern law firm. And uh, uh, that's thanks to that investment we made. So that's one thing we got right, I think, was, was the bet that the technology trend to the cloud, the move away from on-prem to cloud is something that would happen in legal. And, and how could we catalyze that change uh, as part of our uh, overall strategy at Clio? So, okay, so th that was, that's a fascinating story. I love hearing that it basically started at a, as a blog post. Just one guy in Germany found you guys. Um, and that's such a great... Uh, kind of moment of inspiration for anybody who is in this in this moment looking to hang their own shingle. So to come back to the legal trends report from this year's um, cloud conference, you were talking about how, uh, or the trends report talks about how one in five people are looking to or leaving their firm, starting their own thing. And it has to do with this balance, this work-life balance. And yeah. um, the other place that you were talking about balance is with this, th this idea of balancing this flexibility and sustainability. It comes with this anti-fragile law firm. So I want to pull this back to this idea of starting your firm and the website. And, the, and a lot of people think that's that first step with where they're starting a firm and they need to start with a website. And so let's, can you talk a little bit about how to balance doing the website yourself, maybe with the, the Clio new website builder, um, and how you balance the flexibility of doing it yourself with making it a long-term website and keeping it sustainable um, and having that be, you know, maybe if you're st starting out and this is your first time starting a firm, that's the right place for your budget is, is to start there. But how do you balance, like I said, how do you balance keeping it flexible and keeping it sustainable and making it functional for your clients? I well, know that was a big question. It's a good segue <laughs> from that. the story yeah. of, you know, how, yeah. you know, how a, a, a unicorn billion dollar company was, was born out of a single blog post. And yes. it, it just shows you the 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 value of having a footprint on the internet and, yeah. and the way I, I think about this at a macro level is legal demand is increasingly starting with a google search it's it's no longer customers thumbing through uh a yellow pages they're they're not paying attention to the billboard ads that are on the side of the interstate yeah legal demand is starting with a google search and lawyers modern lawyers need to figure out how do you work backwards from that Google search volume and make sure that you've got a, a funnel that is leading from those Google searches to you as the person that is going to help them navigate that legal challenge, solve that problem that they're facing and be, be a partner to them in seeing a good out, a good legal outcome. Yeah. And of course, a website needs to be part of that equation. You need, uh, a landing page, you need the, the, the doorstep to your law firm. And, and again, using the, the bricks and mortar framing here, you, you don't need a fancy AAA office space in your, your downtown of whatever city you're practicing in. You, you need a, a great modern website that helps convey your value proposition as a lawyer. And I think more importantly, shows that you are effortless and easy to work with. And, and the modern consumer, uh, unfortunately, doesn't even really care all that much about whether you are 
uh, the top of your class in law school or, yes. or any of the credentials that most lawyers think that matter. They're, they're looking for simple things like, do you offer online appointment scheduling? Can I schedule my initial consultation with you without having to call your firm? Can yeah. I give you a credit card rather than having to, to mail you a check, which means, first of all, I need to search around and find my checkbook. Can yeah. I text message you or do a live chat on your website rather than, than picking up a phone and calling you? And increasingly... And I just want to insert real quick that yeah. the, the reason that you are saying that you know what these clients are looking for is based on this legal trends report. So if people haven't come across this legal trends report, it's really, really critical because this is just a neutral report that um, Cleo puts out every year that talks about what's happening in that's right you, you know the legal world and and also legal technology what clients are looking for and so you're not just taking these ideas kind of out of thin air you're taking them out of data driven reports that that talk about what they actually care about so so many of the clients that we work with when we're putting together the content for a website spend probably 60 70 percent of their time on their bio and that is not right <laughs> It's wordsmith to perfection. Yes. Yeah, over and over and over to the point where it's just ad nauseum and it's pointless. It's not going to drive any kind of meaningful results. And the reason we know this is because of this legal trends report. It's not just because it's annoying to me. It's because we know this based on what people have said and what works and what they're looking for. So I'm sorry that, to interrupt right. there, but no, it's, 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 it's a super really important point because these... Yeah. What I'm saying may come across as opinions, but they're actually right. facts and, yes. and they're data driven perspectives from the legal trends report. Uh, we've published now seven legal trends reports uh, and, and it's, it's based on uh, quantitative surveys we've conducted of both lawyers and consumers. And, and the inspiration for the legal trends report when we started down this track was really um, an observation I had, and it was some of the research that, that I started before writing my, my book, which is called The Client-Centered Law Firm, um, and, and what this da the, the data research I was doing to, to really provide some of the key insights for the book really helped paint a picture that was surprising to me, which was there's massive divergence between what consumers actually want and what lawyers think they want. Yes. Yeah. And our, our mission at, at Clio, you know, both in our software in terms of what we're we're building and the best practices it it it, it creates as uh, natural outcomes of of utilizing the software, as well as our our presentations and our publications like the Legal Trends Report, is to help make the case to lawyers around how they need to pivot their business practices to accommodate the the modern consumer, and and that essentially we're seeing the what what I call the consumerization of legal services, where consumers are taking their experiences and working with all sorts of other service providers, whether that's Amazon.com or Uber or their accountant or their dentist, taking those lessons and, and essentially they've been trained to expect a certain level of effortlessness in yes. their communication and interactions and they expect the same of a law firm. So back to websites. Yeah, that's when, what I was going to say. When they land on your website. How does that translate in terms of like what the website used to look like when it wasn't really very client centric and then and also throughout the whole system of of the firm you know in terms well, of the entire well, here's how interaction I describe the the opposite of what a lawyer should be aiming to do with their website and unfortunately <laughs> it's what a lot of websites look like today for yeah. lawyers and law yeah. firms but the header of the website is their their firm name in a 6000 point font yeah <laughs> followed by their 800 number in a 5,000 point font. Yeah. So what you're immediately encouraging is what's called channel switching. You know, yes. a consumer came to you, to your website. They probably want to interact with you on your website because they're at work or they're on a call or they're not able to, to call you, but you're encouraging them to reach you by, by phone. Uh, to your point earlier, what you'll see next is all the credentials. You'll see the, the, the bio and you'll see magna cum laude at this law school and <laughs> all, all these things that lawyers think their clients care about that they emphatically don't. Uh, yeah. And then there will be no 
conversion mechanism. You know, the, the, there will be all these credentials and all this information and a list maybe of all the lawyers at the website. And, and the average consumer is staring at this page saying, where do I go? Yep. And what, what the lawyer is hoping they'll do is phone that phone number. And here's, here's the grim reality. Most consumers will actually just close that tab and move on to the next lawyer that they can communicate with the way they want to. Yep. <laughs> and, and the other really damning thing we found in the legal trends report uh, f- a few years ago was a consumer survey where we, we actually secret shopped law firms. Oh, we actually I love phoned this. their phone numbers. We yeah. emailed their email addresses and found that over half of the law firms we reached out to did not even pick up the phone when you called that 800 number on the website. Yeah. Uh, when we left a voicemail, less than half of them returned the voicemail. Uh, same, similar levels of, of lack of responsiveness around email as well. Yeah, so it's a pretty the, low bar. Another, another macro lesson here is, to your, to your point, it's a low bar. You do not yeah. need to be all that amazing at any of this to outperform right. the majority of the market. And yeah. you know, we're, we're, your, your podcast does a great job of talking about you know, marketing and how important it is. And what most lawyers don't realize is that marketing is, is a, an important part of the equation but then how you do intake and conversion and, and how you manage those leads is really the, the necessary investment and follow through to actually convert all of that marketing investment into results. And, yeah. and what we found is the state of affairs for most law firms is really, really poor on that front. Well, so now, that's I, all part of your marketing too. I mean, right. that whole client experience, the whole system that you've got in place or don't have in place, that's all part of your marketing and your client experience and you know building your reputation. So coming back to that message, because this is something that I feel like I talk about ad nauseum as well, is that first impression, that big message. If you are building out, um, if you are going that uh, do-it-yourself route or using the Clio um, website builder, what's, what's the right path? What's the right message to present? Well, first of all, you, you, you need a website. Yeah. And you, you need at least a basic website to position your, uh, your value proposition and show that you're easy to work with. And, you know, for, for a, lot of, a lot of clients, you not having a website will send a pretty negative message. Now, this might sound incredible, but we're, we're talking about, again, pretty basic level of table stakes. There's, there's a lot of lawyers that don't have a website. Yep. And one of the reasons that a lot of lawyers don't have a website is the, the step-in costs for building a website is historically been way higher than it should be. There's a lot of lawyers that spend five, ten, twenty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 and up yep. on building out this, this web presence. And as we know from the Legal Trends Report and, and what we've seen in terms of what the average lawyer is making and just how many lawyers are solos and small firms that can't afford that, that's just prohibitively expensive for yep. many, many law firms. So the inspiration for, for our new product, the, the Clio Grow website builder, was really driven by the fact that we wanted to make uh, a very low cost, and in fact, it's free with your, your Grow subscription website builder that was intuitive, that did not require coding, you don't need to know how to write HTML. You don't need to know how to write JavaScript. Yeah. <laughs> you, you Nor don't should you to... be writing HTML anymore. <laughs> right. You, you don't need to be a, a, a JavaScript whiz. You don't need to be uh, sophisticated at all to, to build this website. You just go through a series of forms and tell us what the, the copy is and upload a few images. And you can have a beautiful looking, really professional, well-designed website in less than 10 minutes. So yeah. in, in the time that people have been listening to this podcast, you could go from zero to published, professional, beautiful website. And, and that, was, that was the vision we, we had for that. And what we wanted to layer into that website was all the technological capabilities that we view a modern law firm as having at their disposal. Yeah. So uh, there's integrated electronic scheduling with the Clio Grow Scheduler. There's electronic intake, so you can intake clients directly from your website and feed them into the lead nurturing flow in Clio Grow. There's integrated electronic payments so you can send your engagement letter to a client and take an initial retainer or take an initial payment for your legal services. You can leverage our, our e-signature capabilities to streamline that even further. So to your, your question around you know, what, what does this 
modern website look like? What are clients looking for? Yeah. If they're not looking for an 800 number and credentials, yeah. they're looking for evidence that you're going to be easy to work with and that you have a good reputation. And, and what we found, again, in this latest 2022 Legal Trends Report is that far and away, the most important piece of decision making, the biggest factor in a client choosing uh, who to work with as a lawyer is their online reviews. Yes. Do they have positive online reviews? And that's, again, why plugging into Google, Google My Business is so important. And it's another thing we make really easy and really straightforward is when that Google search st for legal demand is initiated, you want to make sure that you're at the top of that list in Google My Business with the most reviews, the best reviews. Yep. And then when they click that link and land on your landing page, they can see that you are effortless and easy to work with and that scheduling that initial consultation is something they can do right on your website. And they don't yeah. need to phone a phone number. They don't just send an email. And again, when we do surveys around what does the consumer decision-making process look like, the number one thing that impacts their decision-making process after reviews is responsiveness. So if you're the first lawyer to get back to them, and again, it's why it's so mind boggling that those phone calls and emails went unanswered. <laughs> right, right. If you're the first one to get back to them, they will be, you will be most likely to win that business. And yeah. our view is, is why even wait for the latency and the risk right. of a human connection loop in there? Let that client schedule that initial consultation with you so you can sit down with a cup of coffee in hand in the morning and just sit down to the consultations that have been booked for you right. through this Clio Grow website and through the Clio Grow scheduler. That's really our, our vision of creating an effortless landing page experience for a very low investment, very low time investment. And what's incredible is, is by flicking a couple of buttons in Clio and spending 10 minutes writing some, some basic copy, you have a website that's more capable from a technology perspective than some of these websites that big firms are spending yeah. six figure budgets on. You, well, you know, they don't have that, online scheduling and so on. Exactly, and having the online scheduling available, um, so many of our clients and your report talk about how much work the uh, a lot of lawyers are doing after hours, just picking up the phone and responding. And you know, these are obviously the the firms that actually do respond and have you know are in the other half. But to have that online scheduler reduces the need for for all of that. So you have the your automated system taking care of those after hours calls. And if you're a DUI attorney. Oftentimes, those calls are not coming in during nine to five. Like they're you right. know, going to be in odd hours, but you need to have a system that takes care of that instead of having it to you know land in your and, lap at two in the morning our, on a Thursday. It's a great point because, as you pointed out, what we see in the Legal Trends Report is this demand from clients to reach their lawyers at all hours of day and night and weekends. Yeah, and we see very clearly from lawyers they want to find ways of compartmentalizing their day and they sure. don't want their work day and their client obligations to bleed into every hour of every day of every every day of the week yeah and and we so we've thought really deeply about how do we help bridge those two seemingly irreconcilable desires on the client right. side and the lawyer side and we really think the way to bridge that is technology how do we help make a lawyer seem as responsive as possible without actually requiring that they pick up the phone and talk to a client. So everything from our online scheduler product to Clio for Clients, which is a mobile app that you can provide your clients that gives them access to every piece of work product you produce for them, it gives them access to text messaging to not just you, but to your entire firm. So your support staff or another lawyer in your firm may be the one that's in a position to respond in a timely manner without that being you giving out your personal cell phone number and getting texts at, at, at 2 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. There's, there's ways of solving this problem through technology. And again, you know, when the client wants that articles of incorporation that you did for them two years ago, <laughs> give, them a, give them a portal for them to go and retrieve that document on their own and that's what they'll actually prefer to do. Again, they don't yeah. want 
to make that phone call to you. They don't want yep. to have to write you an email. They just want something that is low friction and effortless. Yep. And technology can help provide a lot of that. So when you do have a live conversation, it's about something that truly deserves that live conversation. You can be really creating more value for your client. I think that's so valuable to recognize that you can take a lot of the weight off of your shoulders just with your systems and your technology that's right. and you know you can you can meet all those demands but it doesn't have to be you and oftentimes that's not even what they want they they want it to be technical and they want it to to just you know be available without having to deal with a, a human yeah it, it can't be you because yeah. you're you're not scalable that's what yeah. really is the at the heart of the the struggle for most solos and small firms especially is they try to create something in growing a law firm that requires scale it needs support from technology and it needs usually support from other people and they're trying to do it all on their own and that yeah. that and that creates the unsustainable environment that unfortunately ends up burning out uh, a lot of solos and we're we're trying to create the tools that that help them bridge that gap and solve that problem yeah so going back to the website builder um, are there certain situations or certain firms that you can uh, imagine? I mean, to, actually, to back up, one, I think a lot of my clients are often surprised to hear that I am a supporter of uh, website builders, do it yourself. If that is where your budget is and that is you're starting out, then, you know, do that and get yourself online, do what you need to do. And then at some point when you need, more support, you need a team behind you, you need strategy, or you need us to help, then we can come in when that fits your budget. So are there certain firms that the website builder is really aimed at, like a certain type of clientele, or are there certain firms that it's not, it wouldn't be good for? Well, it's it's not going to replace the main website for a, for a big law firm, sure. for example. Um, but it could be the only website that a that a solo has but even for the large firm lawyer what i would what i would comment on is the fact that uh this this website builder is not something that is mutually exclusive with your your law, large firm website and your large firm profile page the way i think about this website builder is as being your link in bio website. So what, what I mean oh, by that yes. is, is if you've got a Twitter profile, if you've got a LinkedIn profile, if you've got an Instagram profile, and you want to point somebody to your personal corner of the internet where they can yep. find out more about you and schedule time with you, meet with you, send you a, a question, what is that website? And even if you're a large firm lawyer, practicing, you know, you've got your fancy profile page with all the credentials we just talked about. And that's non optional, you know, they're, they've probably told you, you need this profile page, and, and you can't opt out of it. Yeah, you could still have your own little link in bio yep. website that was built with the Clio grow website builder, that it, again, is this effortless, really low friction, really uh, great user experience for all of those link in bio type and scenarios. And you control it and own it as opposed to- You control to, it and own it. That's and it a can crucial And whatever point. domain you want. So That's I actually right. have a lot of clients who will, who are in that kind of description that you were talking about. Maybe they're part of a larger firm and they want to have their own, they basically want to have their own personal brand and they're kind of pulling themselves, maybe they're pulling themselves to separate from the firm for like a long-term play, or maybe they're just, they have a very specific um, PR angle within the firm and they want, you know, to, to build up their own name for that specific topic or whatever the case might be. And so they just get a domain, which is their name and throw a, a lot of stuff. They have, you know, so, social media links, they may have their LinkedIn bio, some blog posts, but it's all about them specifically. And then if you were to do this with Clio, then you've got all these, this additional functionality too. So you've got scheduling and all of this extra cool stuff that you could add to it. That, that's exactly right. And even if you're a lawyer at a, a big firm, you want your own personal brand and you want some way in, in the same way you wouldn't want your LinkedIn profile to be controlled by your firm. Right. You, you don't want your own personal landing page on the Internet to be controlled by your firm. And what we've seen again, over again, over and over again in our research in the Legal Trends Report is despite the reputational impact that big firms have on their lawyers at the end of the day 
clients really see themselves as having a personal relationship with an individual lawyer at that firm, maybe a team of two or three lawyers, but their relationship is really with you and not with the firm. Yes. And e even speaking from my own experience at Clio, I, I've worked with the same corporate lawyer that's helped us with every one of our funding rounds from the Series A onward. He's been at three different firms, and I've yeah. followed him from firm to firm because that's it's him that yeah. I've got loyalties to and that I've got experience with, not not the firm. So I, I think that mindset is something that really needs to be realized in how you think about developing your digital footprint on the internet and controlling that yeah. that little corner of the internet and what a huge competitive advantage that can be. Yeah. Because yeah. you're again creating a social presence for yourself and and controlling your own little on ramp to right. working with you as a lawyer. And depending on what happens with the economy, whether you where we started this whole conversation, whether you're leaving with, under your own uh, control or somebody else's control, now you have at least started the control of that Google search around your name as opposed to it's right. still being associated with that previous firm and now that's an uphill battle. And so at least you've got, um, you, you've you know started that process so that your name is, is more once again, in your control. So exactly. uh, it is time for the book review. So I know uh, your book is probably not going to be a huge surprise to anybody that went to the Clio Cloud Conference, but what's the book that you want to add to our library and recommend for everyone to um, pick up for, uh, for, you, for your advice? <laughs> yeah. So I, I think the book I'm going to recommend fits in really nicely with uh, our, our discussion around w what does the... Uh, um, what, what's the future hold for us as we, we enter, you know, what, what is inevitably going to be some level of uh, financial difficulty over the, the course of the next couple of years. Uh, we're either, depending on who you talk to, either in a recession or about to enter a recession. And the bizarrely optimistic tone I want to strike is, again, re rewinding to some of the formative experiences I had in building Clio over the course of the, the great financial crisis is that it's actually a great time to build in these economic downturns. And it's a great time to embrace change and to emerge from the downturn stronger than when you entered it. Yep. And, and this is a, actually, a, a, again, again, a pattern we saw in the data that we looked at in the Legal Trends Report, where we looked at COVID-19 and saw that there was a percentage of firms that emerged from COVID-19 stronger and, and in, in a more... Uh, um, fortified position in the marketplace than when they entered it. And similarly, we saw firms that struggled and, and some firms that failed outright. Sure. And the question we asked ourselves is, what, what's the difference between these two firms? And what was really interesting is that there's this pattern where, where it wasn't just survival. It wasn't just getting by that we saw in these firms that, that thrived. It was really, truly that they, they found a way of inflecting their growth upwards. And there's a great book, and this is my book recommendation, a great book that I, I remembered reading about 10 years ago that felt so relevant to what we were seeing in this, in this COVID-19 backdrop, which is a book called uh, Anti-Fragile, um, and it's by Nassim Nicholas Taleb. And he, he's the, the person that popularized the, the term, invented the term, the, the black swan, and, yeah. and talked about black swan events like the great financial crisis, like uh, COVID-19. Yep. That, that's a really uh, um, uh, important insight and, and important part of the, the lexicon he's helped create around random but high impact events. And w w the, the concept of anti-fragility is something that l l came out of his research around black swan events and his observation that there are certain individuals, certain companies that emerge from these crises stronger than when they entered them. And, and basically he said, we need a word for something that is the opposite of fragile. And it's, it's not just resilient. It, it's something that actually responds positively to stress, positively to these crises. And the, the word he invented for that is anti-fragile. Yeah. And the concept I talked about in my CleoCon keynote uh, back in October, uh, and I, I think that keynote is available on YouTube now. If, if it's not now, it will be soon. We'll link um, to it in the show notes. Yeah, too, that would be fantastic. It's definitely worth listening to for sure. Yeah, a lot of concepts to uh, to absorb here. But the idea basically is 
uh, how can lawyers embrace this idea of anti-fragility? And, yeah. and what are the characteristics of the anti-fragile law firms that we saw thriving in these challenging economic environments? And what can a law firm that is potentially fragile today do to position itself to be anti-fragile? Or if you're founding a new law firm today, uh, because you, you view this as a great time to embrace a career change and a, a change of uh, perspective thanks to uh, either voluntary or involuntary changes in your employment status, <laughs> yeah, right. how can you build from the ground up an anti-fragile law firm? So yeah. uh, really, really exciting uh, perspective. One that, like I said, is maybe bizarrely optimistic sounding as we enter this this financial crisis. But I do think it's a great time to innovate. It's a great time to build. And it's a great time to make sure that you're positioning yourself as one of the, the winners that inevitably emerges from these types of financial crises. I think it's so timely because obviously we're in this moment <clears throat> and in a lot of your um, talk during the Clear Cloud Conference talked about the, how it's volatile and the only thing that's certain is the uncertainty. Exactly. Um, and when I'm a very visual thinker, so whenever I hear about this anti-fragile and, and kind of sitting with the volatility. I, I'm in California, and so um, I think a lot about the redwoods in Yosemite and where, you know, at, I don't remember how long ago it was, maybe 100 years ago, they, they had all these wildfires and they were trying to do everything they could to stop the wildfires because they were so worried about these amazing redwood trees. Yeah. And they come to find out that they depend on the wildfires. So they depend on burning it down in order to be stronger and have the nutrients they need in those fires for the redwoods to actually build, uh, to, to uh, grow and you know, right. have what they need. So I always think in terms of there is a certain amount of, um, in, in order to grow, there's a certain amount of burning it down that you have to do. You have to go through and fine tune and look at you know your systems and you create, maybe you start out with these marketing plans and you aim in a certain direction and you're just flat out wrong about a lot of it. You have to be smart enough to pull it back and aim in another direction. Otherwise, you're just going to, you know run off the, the cliff and, and fail. So um, I think there's a, a really critical part to this idea of anti-fragility anti about awareness and being really um, kind of brutally honest with yourself and recognizing like when things need to be burned down and changed and then when you're on the right path and, you know, being kind of taking a really clear and honest look at, at all of that. And there's so exactly. much good stuff in that book and there's so much good stuff in your, in your talk that, you know, we could go on and on, but um, we'll definitely link to the book. We'll have the book cover on the, on the show notes and all of that stuff. Um, so Jack, what's one thing that you know that works in terms of marketing? <laughs> one thing I know that works in terms of marketing is, uh, being authentic and being yourself. And, yeah. and again, I, I think what we see so much with, with lawyers is their websites and their, the profiles, their bios that we talked about. They're, they're trying to create this image of what a lawyer should be. And this yes. almost like generalized stereotype of, you know, a, even a lawyer you see on TV and, and, <laughs> yes. and, and, and trying to be that, that persona. And, and again, we're, we're human beings. We want to connect with other human beings that we feel are authentic. And through million years of evolution, we all have a pretty finely attuned sense of when somebody's not being authentic and not being themselves. And it just puts us at unease. We, we want the lawyers we work with to be human beings. Your clients are looking for personal connection. And again, for some clients, that might be a turnoff. It, they, they might realize like, oh, this isn't a, isn't a personality type I want to work with. But for every one of those, there's going to be somebody else that has affinity for your genuine self and your authentic self. So let that personality sh show through on yeah. your landing page on the internet, on your little corner of the internet. Yes. Show some personality. You know, yeah. How do you stand out from the thousand generic lawyer profiles that look the same and yeah. and that's what people are looking for so I, I think uh marketing the best marketing is about uh a brand or an individual being its authentic self and and letting people kind of opt into whether that's what, what resonates with them or not 
Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, the key to marketing and what you're aiming for is to be memorable. You know, so if people are looking through 100 different websites and they just had a DUI and um, they all look the same and they all are just yep. that giant 800 number that you described earlier, um, then none of that is going to be memorable. And they're just going to think, oh, they're all the same. So then it just comes down to price. And so if you're memorable in a different way, then you've got a game changing experience there. And yeah, um, how, how do you stand out from that yeah, noise? And, exactly. and it, it's, again, easy to do a little bit terrifying to do because you are putting yourself out there a little bit, you're figuring out how do I stand out from the crowd. Yeah. And I, I think the you know, the um, the risk aversion we see in so many lawyers helps inform some of that decision making where so well, yes. let's just be safe. Let's play it sa safe. You know, hey, <laughs> Hey, website design agency, make my website look like that website. I like Exa the way that looks. I can't it, tell it, you how many times I've, I've had that, ex those exact words said to me. Can you just put our logo on that website? It's like, what? <laughs> exactly. No. And, 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 you know, how do we, how do we break out of that pattern and how do we, you know, stop? And again, it's, it's such a precedent driven profession. You know, we're, yeah. we're used to looking at yep. make, you know, the, here, here's what went before and that what's got to yep. follow needs to come naturally from went before. That, that's not the case with marketing. That's not the case with branding. That's not the case with um, the way that you need to intake clients. You, it doesn't need to be a phone call. Like all, all these things that are the generally accepted norms. Think of ways of break, breaking out of that. And again, you don't need to do much yeah. in the way of innovation to stand head and shoulders yes. above the rest of the industry. Answer the phone, for example. Answer the phone. Yeah. Answer those emails. Figure yes. out how to make your website more interactive and, and use some modern technologies to, yes. to, to do that. And again, you know, realizing, I think the other no regrets recommendation I would make is understand your consumer. Use a client-centered mindset yes. to develop the way you're you're building out your legal services everything from your landing page that initial touch point a client might have with you all the way to the way you send your final bill and what that looks yeah. like and what the ways to pay that bill are think about the entire client journey think about how you want to show up over that client journey and and again if you think really deliberately about that and deliver an experience that resonates with your clients you will find that you activate this flywheel of growth where you've got yes more happy clients coming out of your, their interactions with your law firm, more five-star reviews on Google, more five-star reviews on Avvo, yep. more clients coming to your website because they see those reviews. And again, it, it's a self-reinforcing positive feedback loop that yep. uh, can be just so hugely impactful. It just drives to, your entire uh, your business. Growth. Exactly. It drives your entire business. And that, yeah. uh, that is all free, by the way. Yeah. Well, and aside from your book, because I that was a good tie-in to your book, The Client... Client-centered law firm or centric? The, the client-centered law firm. That's okay. Right. So we will we'll definitely link to the Legal Trends Report, your book. Those are really the main two resources and takeaway from this conversation, I think. Um, go read the Legal Trends Report and read what people are actually saying about what they want. Don't guess and put that on your website and right there, like you said, it's a low bar that you will that's you'll be standing you know apart differently from most other law firms and exactly. then figure out how to be client centric and that also will set you apart from most other law firms that's right yeah jack newton is the ceo and founder of clio thank you so much for this super timely and super valuable conversation this was this was a great one and i really appreciate your time yeah likewise thanks for having me and uh, i really enjoyed the conversation as well Thank you for listening to this episode of the CouncilCast podcast. Be sure to visit our website at council-cast.com for the resources mentioned on the episode and to give us your feedback. If you enjoyed this episode, I would appreciate if you could rate and review the podcast on Apple and subscribe to your favorite podcast platform. See you on the next one.